This particular unit chapter deals with the, the idea of trade and comparative advantage. Very simply, comparative advantage simply means that somebody has the ability to produce something cheap, more cheaply than you can produce it. If we take the idea of we have two different people, we have a painter and we have an accountant. The, the accountant gets $50 an hour, the uh, painter gets $15 an hour. The painter, it's going to take him four hours to do his taxes. And therefore he's giving up $60 worth of income. The accountant can do those same taxes in an hour. So it would benefit the painter to go out and actually hire the accountant, let that particular person do the taxes, pay them $50, and still have $10 left over. Subsequent to that, this, the painter can paint a house, let's assume it's an old painter, uh, can paint a room in five hours or for $75. But it takes the, the accountant, who's a little bit younger, a little bit more spry, only two hours to do it. But in this case, there's still an advantage for them to specialize, to trade, because now the accountant would be giving up uh, $100 an hour versus only having to pay $75. So there is an advantage to trade. There's an advantage to say, even though I can produce what you're making, you can do it more cheaply than I can. And if we take that and take it from two specific jobs and transfer it over to countries, we have the production's possibilities curve of the United States and Mexico with the various amounts of products that they can produce. In this case, the United States decides that it can produce both avocados and soybeans, the same as Mexico. It decides that without trade, that society wants 33 avocados and 19 soybeans. Subsequent to that, Mexico wants 24 avocados and society, their society only wants nine soybeans. So therefore, we have a total amount of products of 85 goods. If we add up the avocados and soybeans of both the United States and Mexico, we have 85 goods. They can both produce the same goods, but what we have to say is, do, do either of them have a comparative advantage over the production of any particular good? And in order to do that, we have to ask ourselves a question. If the United States produced all soybeans and no avocados, what would be the ratio? What would they be giving up in order to do that? Well, if they produce, sorry, if they produce all avocados and no, no soybeans, they can do 90. If they can do all soybeans and no avocados, they can produce 30. So therefore, this is a three to one ratio, meaning that for every soybean they produce, they have to give up three avocados, or for every avocado they produce, they have to give up a third of a soybean. Uh, and subsequent to that, Mexico, if they produce 15 soybeans and no avocados, uh, or all avocados and no soybeans, they can do 60, or a four to one ratio. In other words, that they can make four avocados to one soybean. And therefore, there is a comparative advantage. The soil's better, the sun is better, the weather climates are better to do that. And therefore, they're willing to trade. They're willing to come together and sit down at the table and say, yes, there is an advantage for us to trade, provided, provided that the United States can get more avocados than three, and provided that Mexico is willing to give up uh, or, uh, excuse me, that Mexico is not going to have to give up all four, that they can get something less than four. So we know now that they, that they, they can produce. If we take this and uh, take a look at this, we can see now that through specialization, we have, 90 ex we have a total of 90 products, or an excess, a marginal amount of products of five. We can, through specialization, we can get five additional products. And to see how this would be on each of their individual, on each of their individual um, production's possibilities curve, if we take the United States, and right now the United States, without specialization, is producing 33 avocados and 19 soybeans, 
and 19 soybeans is here. And for Mexico, for soybeans and avocados, they want 24 avocados and nine soybeans. And that would be their production possibilities curve. Well, if the United States specializes now in the production of soybeans and trades them to Mexico, it's going to produce 30 soybeans. It only wants to keep 19. So therefore, it has an advantage. It can trade those 11 to Mexico for some avocados. And therefore, without a change in any of the resources in Mexico, we now have 11 soybeans. And therefore, our production, Mexico's production possibilities curve has increased. Subsequent to that, in Mexico, they want uh, they can produce 60 soybeans. They want to keep 24, or therefore they have an excess of 36 that they can in fact trade. We get 36, and the point moves. And therefore, without a change in technology, uh, without a change in any of the resources, through specialization, we in fact excuse me, through specialization, through comparative advantage, and through trade, we can push our production's possibilities curve to produce more of all goods, or to achieve all of more goods, not necessarily to produce more of all goods. And this is verified up here again. Without specialization, we're only producing 85 goods between the two countries, and when we do specialize, we produce 90 goods. So there is an advantage to produce or to trade. Uh, again, if you have any questions about this particular concept, put them on discussion board, the discussion board page of Blackboard, email me, and I'll put the answer on, uh, on the discussion board for everybody to, uh, for everybody to benefit. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.